Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. Let's talk a little about artificial sweeteners. Are they dangerous for us? Should we completely avoid them? Can they be potentially beneficial? Let's talk about some different, different topics on there. So we've heard that sugar itself can have negative effects, particularly when consumed in excess, which most people tend to do. And sometimes just consuming it you know, in a, in a decent amount can cause inflammatory issues. Uh, what about artificial sweeteners? So artificial sweeteners are things that taste sweet but don't have any significant calories. Sometimes they're cut with products that will raise a caloric content as a, as a bulking agent like maltodextrin. But in general, the artificial sweetener itself tends to be uh, deficient in calories. Uh, it tends to be very, very sweet, often many, many times, hundreds of times sweeter than, than sugar itself. Do they have any impacts on our health that we need to be concerned about? Well, I think, again, this is nuanced and I think depends on who you are. So let's talk about some of those. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is the fact that, you know, these artificial sweeteners are non-nutritive. They contain no calories, except that they're coming with fillers, but in general, no calories. Do they have an impact on insulin? Well, that's an interesting topic. And the answer to that is some of them do actually. And there's been studies on animals looking at the release of, of insulin secretion by the pancreatic beta cells in response to tasting these, these various artificial sweeteners. And it seems that sometimes a bitter compound that some of these things have will actually have an have an insulinotropic effect that can can cause release of, of insulin. So what is the what is the consequence of raising your insulin level in the absence of any incoming food? It's kind of like you know pulling the fire alarm when there's no fire. Or, you know, crying wolf all the time. And so over time, that can sort of interfere with the actual signals of when you're supposed to release ins insulin. Maybe you have a, a larger response in response to actual sugar getting there. And so maybe this will lead to elevated levels of insulin overall leading subsequently to things like insulin resistance, you know, finally uh, diabetes and obesity. So it can be problematic depending on who the person is and what the, sh what the artificial sugar they're, they're uh, ingesting is. All right, let's look at some common health claims. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. Artificial sweeteners are billed as calorie-free. Is that actually true? Well, as I said, in many cases they are, but the way they are formulated often with these different thickening compounds uh, like maltodextrin, which is very common. You'll often find erythritol mixed with things like maltodextrin to give it a more of a powdery, sugary type of bulk, so it's easy to, to substitute for re recipe. So that will lead uh, to a uh, clearly a response in the body due to that. Uh, these unnecessary fillers ultimately can cause negative consequences in the body. So be careful when you're selecting those to make sure you don't have things that are cut with all these um, artificial ingredients or the additional ingredients, rather. Okay, number two, artificial sweeteners are helpful for weight loss. Okay, this is, a, this is again, a nuanced topic. Is it beneficial to substitute full-strength sugary beverages with a artificial one? For, for some people, that's going to be a, a net positive. But for many people, as we mentioned, uh, this continued insulin signaling in the absence of food, depending on the sweetener, can lead to metabolic dysregulation for a lot of people and therefore ultimately cause problems down the road. Uh, many people will find that artificial sweetener consumption will increase the desire for sweet tasting foods and make you eat other foods. And so sometimes it makes sense just to give them up. Uh, this 2012 study in the Quarterly Journal of Experimental Psychology researchers found that rats fed artificial sweeteners consume more food and gain more weight. So it may have an app appetite stimulatory effect uh, that, that may lead to obviously increased food consumption and therefore often obesity. Remember, obesity has a lot, a lot to do with satiety. Calories are, are important here, but remember satiety or lack of satiety is driving uh, a lot of that. Another study in 2017 suggested that the use of artificial sweeteners led to decreased satiety and altered glucose regulation. Okay, either of these conditions or both of these conditions can lead to unintentional weight gain. So there is some level of concern to be had around artificial sweeteners. Okay, so if your body is getting a signal that something sweet is coming, remember we have, we have many sweet receptors throughout our digestive tract, you know, certainly including our mouth, we're all aware of those, but even farther out down in our stomach and small intestine, we still have these sweet receptors. And when those are stimulated, our body thinks it's getting a lot of glucose. And so again, there's going to be a hormonal effect on that. And some of these sweeteners are extremely, extremely uh, sweet. And you can look at this chart here, which shows you the relative, uh, you know, sweetness relative to 
uh, table sugar. And so uh, up to 20,000 times as sweet for something like Ativantane, which is uh, quite sweet, as you guys might imagine. So with this in mind, you know, a lot of people will do better removing sugar and sugar addiction from their life. And by continuing to eat very sweet food, it doesn't really do that effectively. Okay, a third claim is artificial sweeteners are a healthy option on a low-carb diet. Again, this can also be a problematic for many people. Alongside some of the potential things we've talked about, artificial sweeteners may sabotage an individual's efforts to eliminating the carbs and sugar they need to remove on a low-carb diet. So again, it's sometimes uh, necessary to completely just remove all sense of sweet from your diet to get over those cravings, and artificial sweeteners can often prolong and delay that eventual improvement that you're looking for. Artificial sweeteners may potentially interfere with digestion. You know, uh, there's some thought around the microbiome. Basically, every single food we, we ingest is going to have an impact on our microbiome, and artificial sweeteners are no different. Whether that's deleterious or not is certainly debatable, but it definitely is going to have some effect. Uh, my advice is for those people dealing with things like sugar addiction or uh, issues with carbohydrates intolerance, it's probably best to, at least for a period of time, completely remove all sense of sweetness from your, from your diet. So you may feel better by eating whole foods. Uh, uh, meat is a wonderful, wonderful food that can help us to get over those sugar addictions. If you tolerate and want to include vegetables in your diet, that might be an option. Now again, I, I'll say this again, it's not for me, I'm not a vegetable person, but for some people that tolerate them well, that may be a better option for them. Okay, there was some concern uh, a while ago that artificial sweeteners were associated with cancer. And, and so some people say, well, that was old, old data and, and artificial sweeteners never cause cancer. They don't cause cancer. Certainly, uh, we see that there was a study in 2022, which was an eight-year population study, and showed that consumption of artificial sweeteners, especially aspartame and acyl sulfame K, was connected with a statistic. Statistically significant increased risk of cancer. Saccharin has traditionally been thought to increase risk of bladder cancer uh, in mice. Again, it's very high dose. And so there are still some links there that may be concerning. Uh, if there's no reason to consume these products, perhaps it may be better to remove them. Uh, another study has linked artificial sweeteners with diabetes, gut health dysreg dysregulation, anxiety and chronic headaches. So it could be these artificial sweeteners are interfering with your metabolism. I think the evidence is at least there to suggest that that may be a possibility. Maybe, you want, maybe you're willing to, to see how that goes with your health. Other people may not want to do that. Okay, so there you have it. There's some common myths and facts around uh, artificial sweeteners. I hope this has been informative. Again, like I said, there's some nuance here. Uh, take this information, do with it what you will. Some of you guys will be able to tolerate artificial sweeteners depending on the type. Uh, and use that in moderation. Other people need to steer clear of this. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, use the notification bell, share with your friends if this has been helpful. Thank you very much. Dr. Baker signing off. We'll see you guys again.